Happiness. An ironic title, to say the least. This deals with three sisters living in New Jersey. Once again, suburbia. No real surprise there, seeing as this is made by Todd's Lawns. Anyway, the sisters are Joy, a very naive and unsuccessful songwriter, and the other two are more successful, Helen, a self-destructive poet, and Trish, married and with a family. But her husband does have a secret, and I'm not going to go into exactly what it is here. If you must know, there are plenty of places to find that out. This is a very confrontational film. It very directly explores social problems and pro problems with sexuality and relationships. And yes, once again, that is more or less typical for Todd's Lawns, but he's good at it, and if it ain't broke, The tone is pretty ironic for the very depressing subject matter. Before I go too much into how this is very divisive and how a lot of people are going to hate it outright, I just gotta say, this completely had my attention from start to finish. It's two hours and ten minutes sans credits, and I just... I couldn't take my eyes off it. And it didn't leave me depressed. And I'm a cynic, so... Not that many movies just completely grab me like that. Certainly not such recent ones. I expected it to be good. I'd heard it referred to as Salon's masterpiece, and I would say it is. It's probably the best of his. It is also one of the most offensive of them. And I do want to say, even if you don't like it, you might still like that you watched it. Not everyone winds up loving it, I suppose not everyone will be happy they watched it, you know, read up on it first, maybe. And I do want to make absolutely clear, it's ridiculous to say that the people who don't like it for whatever reason don't get it or, you know, are necessarily prudes or something, you know. That will be the case with some, yes, but that's too easy of an allegation to make. I personally loved it. If you wind up, you know, hating it, I don't think you're automatically just, you know, close-minded. What I will say is, do remember that when problems go unexplored, they also go unsolved. A lot of people died from HIV and AIDS, and not all of them were homosexual, before people admitted that not only homosexuals could contract this disease. Anyway, oh, and don't expect that to be the last depressing thing you're going to hear in this review, just so you know. This goes into perversions. I guess without giving away too much, I could say pedophilia and rape occur in this. And I would say at least one interpretation of this, and it's the one I lean most towards, is moral nihilism. nihilism. I've never heard an American actually say that word, so I'm just guessing here. In other words, there is no black and white. There is no purely good or purely bad. 
there are just subtle shades of grey in everyone and everything. With that said, this movie does not glorify any negative and destructive behavior, not in the least. This is also in other areas than just just the perversion. This is disgusting. I will admit that. There is explicit dialogue. Some of it... Okay, that would be a spoiler. Never mind. And we see some things that not everyone cares to see. Myself included. And perhaps that is a bit unnecessary. And the disgusting things are kind of played for laughs. This one does have some humor in it. I think it's one of the first times I've really laughed, and the one I've laughed the most at. I mean, I will admit, storytelling made me laugh at times. So did palindromes. Welcome to the Dollhouse didn't. Not really. This made me laugh more than the other two combined, I would say. And there are those that will laugh at even more. Laugh at stuff I didn't personally find funny. I wouldn't really call it just a black comedy, though. I think that's not really the appropriate. I would refer to this as a drama first, and then a comedy. A satire. It comments on reality. And I would say it's quite realistic. Maybe not everything, and it is showing extremes, granted, but every single character is utterly psychological psychologically credible. I was also amazed yet again at how smoothly Salons manages to deliver exposition and develop these characters. I mean, so much is said with so few lines. And it's not even that this doesn't have that much dialogue. It's just that most of the dialogue is really loaded. Not all of it has a deeper meaning, but almost all of it reveals something about the characters, the relationships between these people, their background, overtly or otherwise. At one point, one of the characters says that they're Everyone has both pluses and minuses. And that, again, if you go by this interpretation that I lean towards, is maybe the central message of this, really. You know, no one is entirely one way or another way. And I will admit, as some have pointed out, this doesn't really offer a solution to all these problems that it brings up. I don't personally think that that completely takes away its value. I personally think that it is incredibly necessary to keep focusing on the problems even if you don't think you have a solution. I would rather hear 50 different people complain about essentially the same problem, then hear 50 different people either not talk about the problem or try to argue for obviously inappropriate solutions to the problem. I don't see shame in Acknowledging that there is a problem with something just because you don't already know how to solve it. 
if you don't say that there's a problem, why would anyone start to look for a solution? The acting is excellent. Everyone performs, portrays their character so incredibly convincingly and at all times without lending some quality to them that seems unrealistic. We get close to some of these perverted people. That sounds bad, just me saying that. Some of these people who have perversions, and they aren't bad. Nor are the people who, for example, don't have perversions, or who seem good, nor are they completely good. Salons uses a lot of long takes. He doesn't use close-ups unless it's absolutely necessary. He lets the events unfold before our eyes without really enhancing them in editing. You know how in a classic movie approach, you know, the action will take place and if it's important, you know, you'll get a close-up, you know, something moving or remaining still within the close-up and, you know, really... And that is manipulating, you know, that is shoving it right into our faces. And in this, it isn't necessary because the actors are that good and the material is that compelling. As with other of his films, this has been accused of not really having a plot. And maybe, but does every movie need that? Maybe this isn't as much a story as it is a snapshot, as I said about Welcome to the Dollhouse as well. It's a portrayal. It's a look into a world. And that can't always be conveyed best by a linear progression of events. The three sisters do have intertwining situations and acquaintances, and this works out rather well. And as with most of Salanza's movies, he puts his leads through a lot of cruel and really painful experiences. Music is used, again, somewhat sparingly, and it always has a good effect. They're always careful choices. This does also have some big names, and maybe you already realize by this point in the review, that isn't going to change how you feel about it if this isn't a movie that you can see yourself liking. If you know just from hearing what it's about that that is crossing your boundaries, then the fact that this is Philip Seymour Hoffman, I don't know how known or well-renowned she is, but Cameron Mannheim, I've always been impressed with her. I think she does really good work. You know, that that fact isn't going to change how you may feel about the movie.